Thing is disconnected. Just I'll connect him again. Hello. Yeah, Chirag bhai. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, sir. Okay. Uh, good evening. First, we would like to thank BMA team, our president Sri Deepak Shah sir, our vice president Sri Nimil Bakshi, our secretary Sri Kalpesh Shah. Our treasurer Sri Sarad Jain. Our advance thank to today's guest for giving her time from her busy schedule. Also, advance thanks to all attendees for spending time for listening to us. From the centuries, India was known for diamonds. A lot of people came from outside to invade us for this. None of them got complete success. Today is the birthday of our two jewels, Sri Chandrasekhar Azad and Sri Lokmana Tilak. They did work in the life with clear vision of independence and sacrificed their life to give us today. If you study these people's life, they had clear vision. Today is also auspicious day of Guru Purnima. So let's remember gurus who guided them to achieve success and made this person. Also let's thanks to our gurus who helped us to achieve success in our life and made our personality. At BMA, today's topic is for improving our virtues by increasing personal productivity. Today we have very interesting topic breakthrough from procrastination to increase our personal productivity. About today's speaker, Bharti Nayak is global speaker, procrastination breakthrough coach and entrepreneur. She has helped over 70,000 people in the transforming their life in last 16 years. She has done her MSc in human development and family studies and is an internationally certified trainer of Neuro Linguistic Program, NLP, from INLPTA, UK. She is serving as Educational Chair and leading PSAI Talk, show at the Professional Speaker Association of India, PSAI. She has been invited as a keynote speaker at the prestigious Professional Speaker Summit 2021, along with the International Speaker and Toastmaster annual conference 2021 by Toastmaster Division A, Qatar. Uh, over to you, uh, Bharti Madam. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chirag, and thank you, Nimil. It is, it is really a pleasure and honor to uh, be at Baroda Management Association. And uh, being a member here over these years, I have seen Baroda Management Association growing and uh, so many professionals, so many companies have uh, benefited and are already a part of it. So thank you so much for this. Uh, let me, if you can put me into the spotlight, I will share my screen. Now. Just let me know if you can hear my, uh, if you can hear the music. 
is the music audible yes sir yes yes wake up said the old magi looking at everybody here wondering why we are here why want to know so much about productivity what is it that we are we are looking for do we have questions that we don't have answers to are we thinking about our dreams are we thinking about our goals or are we wishing that yes some day my dreams will come true and as this old magi was looking towards everybody it reminded him of a story a story of a young energetic professional this young energetic professional has dreams has goals is looking forward to life and this professional he is standing exactly at the door step huge door waiting to open and as the door opens he walks in and there's a red carpet in front of him and he smiles he walks slowly on the red carpet looking around only to see so many people cheering him up applauding him for his achievements cheering him up for all the efforts the hard work that he has done and he looks at his posters his banners his awards and his achievements and he's walking towards the stage there is a spotlight and he's waiting for that spotlight waiting to go there on the stage and share his story and as he walks up onto the stage and stands exactly in the center where he looks at the spotlight and the moment he turns he shocked everybody just vanish the room is empty there's nobody in the room all he could see is empty chairs and dust dirt weeds just lying there and he said no this can't be this was my dream i came here to share my story i came here to share my achievements my goals and far from a distance he saw something that was shining with a hope he runs there to look what is it that is shining and he looks at a big rock he picks the rock in his hand and as he picks the rock in his hand he realizes that there are gems all these gems are stuck in that rock and those gems are shining and when he looks closely to those gems he looks at those gems and he could see each of his dream each of his goal in those gems he's excited he wants to pull those gems out he wants to really pick all the gems and grab it in his arms grab it in his hands he tries hard with his hand he looks here and there for some tool something that would help him and he is putting all his efforts but alas nothing help nothing help to even pull one gem out of this 
all he felt was helpless with gems stuck in that rock all he could feel was very disappointment feeling bad with a hope that maybe some day my dreams will come true some day my goals will become a reality welcome to this amazing amazing evening and i bharti naik i welcome you all to this personal productivity this session where let's dig out let's find out how to break through from this procrastination because this is what keeps us stuck this is what delays our goals this is what delays our dreams the actions that we want to take the decisions that we are we are yet to take and sometimes we take hours days months and sometimes years to take one decision sometimes we take years to take that one action that would change our life that would change the entire approach towards our life so the fundamental question is why people procrastinate why is it that we delay our actions why is it that we delay our decisions and these were some of the questions that were coming in my way when i started my journey as an entrepreneur over this decade being an entrepreneur being a professional i had my ups and downs in my career i had my ups and downs in my journey but everything was working fine until sometimes i started facing some hiccups in the business i started losing opportunities i started losing my business and i was i was not able to find out not able to understand that why this is happening when i started reflecting back i realized that maybe i delayed taking some action by a day maybe i procrastinated in sending a proposal maybe i procrastinated in giving a call to somebody for an opportunity maybe i was sitting on an opportunity waiting for somebody to come and knock the door but that was not it when gradually i started moving in my business one by one i started facing those hurdles and there came a point in that in my life where i said enough is enough something has to be done why is it that i procrastinate why is it that people procrastinate and what happens when you procrastinate and that is where i started my journey to understand this one word what the hell is this procrastination and i started researching about this subject i started studying books articles uh frameworks that people have given about time management about time matrix about so many conceptual frameworks that's given by lovely researchers and i was surprised and i'm sure you all will be surprised i was surprised to know that there are thousands and thousands of research has been done only on this one word and there are millions of people who are suffering getting choked up because of this procrastination i came across some articles which are being written by harvard universities by stanfords i went through hbrs to find out that one of the reason of anxiety is procrastination because we put everything to the last minute we put everything to the last minute and we put ourselves unknowingly unfortunately in the state of anxiety now let me ask you this question how many of you have gone through this experience where you have done at the last minute 
where everything has been rushing for you, your heartbeat went up, you started breathing very short, and there was a strong adrenaline rush, and you had to do everything very fast. How many of you have experienced this, where something went at the last minute? Come on, be honest with yourself, and I'm very sure that we all would have gone through this experience of taking things to the last minute or doing this at the last minute. When as a student of our college, when we had our examinations, when we had our submissions, when we have to submit our reports, sometimes we delay it and we say, Kal karenge. there's this attitude of saying, I will do it later or I'll do it tomorrow. That's okay, chalta hai. But let me tell you something. When I was studying about this subject, I realized that we all have these patterns inside us. And when we have these patterns, they keep on repeating unknowingly. So there would be a point in your life where you would have done it for the first time, where you would have said, let me do it later. Let me do it tomorrow. I will get over it. And that's why the first time you delayed. And when you had very, very short time, you wanted to do it to you, you wanted to do it to submit your assignment, submit your report, complete your work so that it reaches the client. You would have really, really managed somehow to do it. And that was the first time you would have experienced the anxiety where you would have put yourself into tremendous pressure, putting all the energy in one, in one direction and somehow manage to submit that particular report. Now I'll tell you what happens. Whenever you're putting all these things at the back burner, whenever you delay any task, any work or anything, and you do it at the last minute, you do it at the last moment, what happens? Whenever you do this, and you enter into that zone of anxiety, all these cells of your body, they are put under tremendous pressure and they are contracted. And that's where you feel that entire pressure, the stress in your brain. And when the job is done, when you have submitted, I'm sure you would have felt, oh, what a relief, finally, I was able to submit it. You know why you feel that? You felt that because you felt exhausted. You felt drained as if somebody has sucked up the energy from you. And that happens because all your cells were contracted for a very long time. And let me tell you a little bit of science. If you contract your cells for a long time, all your body cells for a long time, it takes not less than 100 days to bring it back to the relaxed mode. It takes time for the cells to come back and tremendous amount of energy is released when you contract your cells. Now let me ask you this question. Do you want to put yourself into the state again and again? Do you want to go through the state of anxiety and put tremendous pressure on your body, tremendous pressure on your cells every time you want to take action, every time you want results? Well, if it is once or twice, maybe some emergency, maybe some urgency, that's understandable. But if it happens again and again, you need to take a pause and reflect what is happening. You need to take a pause and find out, have I unknowingly created a pattern inside me which is not working for me? Because if you look at the long time, you will it will affect your health to a very, very long time. So when I was going through all these details, the, the literature that was there in procrastination, I came across very, very interesting articles. And that showed that 
there are ways that you can remove this procrastination. But the fundamental question is why we should remove this procrastination because we have never ever did any calculation. We have never calculated what are the consequences if we delay our task? What are the consequences if we delay an action or delay a decision? So many a times we forget to pay the bills, light bills, phone bills, sometimes credit cards, sometimes our, uh, our, our, um, some, some bills that we have is spending. Sometimes we forget that. So what happens when we forget that? Banks charges us penalty, charges us some interest. Maybe that's a very small, tiny amount. But if you put all these tiny amounts together and you sum it up, you will realize that you have, you have lost a considerable amount. Why? Because of this, because of this pattern of delaying your task, because of this pattern of delaying your action towards paying something. Now let's look at our health area. How many of you exercise every single day? You can put your answers in the chat. How many of you exercise regularly every single day? How many of you walk every day? How many of you really take care of your health every single day? Well, not many, not many. Why? Because we don't pay attention to that. That's okay. We are all fine. We eat well. We do everything good. So nothing is going to happen to us. We stay in that illusion. Why? Because we never ever calculate that what will be the consequences of not paying attention to our health on a daily basis. Now your health is not taking a lot of time. I will give you a couple of hacks that will help you to take your exercise or take your health in your hands in just like that. You know what happens? We wait for such pandemic to come to make us realize that health is important. We wait for doctors to tell us that please take care of your health. It is alarming. But the question is, why do we wait for this? Why do we wait for anybody or anything to happen in our life to take any action? Why do we delay or ignore these areas? Simple reason, we have never calculated what are the consequences. So I came across a very interesting video that said that if you are not taking a walk for a day, say a walk for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, if you're not doing this for a day, your heartbeats reduces by few pulse. And if you keep on doing this, it reduces by minutes. And if you keep on doing this over the years, forget about having a nice healthy body. You will not know how it is damaging the organs of your body. I wish we had a transparent body to, to look within and find out how it is affecting. So now let's come to another area, the area of our relationships. What we do sometimes in the quest of making money, focusing on our career, focusing on so many other things, we forget to give that time to our relationships, to our family, to our friends, to rejuvenate us, to refresh us. We don't do all these things. Why? Because we can do it any other time. That's OK. Let's do it tomorrow. The same pattern repeats. So what is happening is every time when you are delaying your task, when you're delaying your action, when you're delaying your decision, it is affecting either of the areas of your life. And that is where I started working towards that procrastination breakthrough. And this breakthrough helped me to 
come out of my procrastination patterns and it also helped me to achieve the results that I wanted to achieve. So the results that I achieved, not only during this pandemic, but over these years, last year, I fulfilled my dream of becoming a podcaster and I have a podcast channel. And very interesting story is that I was delaying this entire task since a year because I didn't know how to start a podcast channel. There are a lot of technical aspects to it. It's not a simple way of creating an MP3 file and uploading it on a platform. It requires a different technical ways to do it. But I was, I was delaying it. Why? Because of so many challenges, which I'm going to share in next few minutes. But while I overcome all my challenges, I completed my task and fulfilled my dream of a podcaster. I jumped into professional speaking, transitioning from becoming a corporate trainer to an executive coach to a professional speaker. Well, this transition happened as I was fulfilling my dream. And all these things could happen because I kept on removing the challenges that I had. Moving on to getting awarded in a couple of platforms, achieving 120% of my target, and also not just achieving, achieving these awards and accolades, but also my business went to 100%. All these because I kept on focusing on one thing at a time. So allow me to share something very exciting that I deliberately made this for today's session. And I really wanted to show this. Give me a minute, I'll just flash this here. Give me a heads up if you can see my screen. Are you able to look at the screen? Okay, thank you so much. So if you look at this entire matrix, there are these numbers, one, two, three, four. And I want to quickly ask you this question. If you look at the names, it's Achiever, Dreamer, Rainbows, and Random Winners. Do you resonate yourself? with these names and quickly let me know in the chat box, what is the number that you would want to give to yourself? That, okay, I'm a dreamer, I'm a random achiever, I'm a, I'm a random winner, I'm a rainbow or I'm an achiever. Who do you feel that you resonate that with? Do you feel that fantastic? Number four, lovely. Thank you, Subhash. Okay, number four. That's nice, Eva. Srinivas, number one, lovely. Rainbow, that's nice, Param. Okay, Ruby, number four. Okay. So let me tell you what these, what these numbers signify and what are these categories. Now these categories I came through while I was doing my research on the subject which is procrastination and I was working with a bunch of people to find out how we can remove this procrastination barriers and really break through from the patterns of procrastination. So this is achievers matrix. Now when you look at number one, who would you call it as an achiever? Somebody who has a very well-defined goal, very well-defined, and has absolute clarity in the actions, who is somebody who is focused and consistently taking actions. The approach is very much focused and consistent. And above all, is enjoying the life. We are not in the rat race here. Let me tell you, each one of you, 
we are not in the rat race. We are here to make our future better. And that's why we are here in this present, working towards it. Think about it. Why you are here today listening to me? Why am I here today to share my insights? Why Nimal is taking so much of efforts? Why Chirag is doing all these things? Why BMA is doing all these things? Why we are here? We are here to, we are here to work towards our future, to make our future bright. That's why we are learning, we are sharing, we are taking those insights. So we have our own journey in life. And that journey is not the journey of race. We are not in a race. We are having our own marathons. Where important is to complete what you started. But as you are running with your own speed, with your own pace, with your own momentum, you must remember to enjoy the life. And that's what achievers do. Now let's look at dreamers. Dreamers have great vision great vision. They always dream about big things. They always talk about big things. But less actions or sometimes no actions. They have long plans and strategies. They always tell you to do this, to find out this. They always are excited with pumped up energy and they will tell you loads of information. They will give you loads of knowledge. They'll tell you so many insights that you can do like this, you can do like that. But these, all these things are only plans. And they have a big illusion of time. They always think that we have a lot of time in this world to take actions. And time is abundant, we have. So there's always an illusion of time. The concept of time is, is, is random in their minds. Now let's come to the third category, the rainbows. Oh, I love rainbows. Rainbows have no vision. All the different colors, they will give you sometimes red, sometimes yellow, sometimes blue, sometimes green. Defocused action, they will do, they'll take actions, but they will be defocused. Sometimes doing this, sometimes doing different things. Short plans, so they will do short plans and they will do random actions without without knowing where is the destination. So all the time you will see these people that they are busy. They are busy with doing something, but they are not productive. They are busy. So if you ask them, they will tell you that yes, we are busy, we are working, and there's a lot of pressure. So they take a lot of mental pressure and they'll keep on working, but they're stuck with the time. They're stuck with the time because whenever they are taking actions, whenever they're working on their short plans, that itna kar lete hai, bas ho gaya. They always work in that, but they are stuck. Why they are stuck with time? Because they are not moving forward in their life. Well, they are progressing, they are aging by age. They are growing by age, but not in their life. They are stuck with that time. Well, if you look at random winners, what happens with these random winners? With these random winners, they are fantastic. So what do they do is they have many ideas. They will give you loads of ideas and they will give you quick actions and they will take quick actions. They will pick up one idea randomly and they will start working towards it. They will have a very focused approach and they will get the results. And that's why they are winners. So they will get the results. They will do quick actions, one, two, three, four, and that's done. And the approach is very much focused. But if you ask them, what next? They'll have no answer. They'll say, I don't know. I had this idea. I did this and that's done. Aribat wrote the vision. What next? And then they will sit for some days, maybe for a few months, and then they will pick up something. And then again, they will move forward. Random winners. Sometimes they get it right. Sometimes they may not get it right, but that's okay. Now this is the matrix 
that I created after understanding so many patterns that people have. Patterns of how they are doing things, patterns of how do they take decisions or why they don't take decisions? Why do they delay their task? I created these profiles to help you all understand that sometimes you might be falling in the dreamer category. Sometimes you might be falling in the random category, the random winners. Sometimes you may resonate with yourself as rainbows. Sometimes you might be assuming that I'm an achiever. But let me tell you, if you want to be in the achievers category, where you have a very well-defined goal, where you have clarity in actions, where you have a very focused, consistent approach, and you are enjoying your life, when you want to do that, there are four principles that you can follow. And these four principles will help you to create the blueprint of success, which I call it as an achievers blueprint that will help you to create that. So what are these four principles? But before I tell you these four principles, I must tell you that to, to know these four principles, it is important to understand what each principle is helping you to break the barrier. So when I did my research in procrastination, when I surveyed hundreds of people and I took up their data, I took up their answers, their responses, to understand that what challenges they are facing, why do they don't take actions? Why is it that they sit on their dreams? Tell me, tell me if you have any dream, any goal that you want to fulfill, and maybe you're postponing it every year. And when 31st December comes, you make your new year resolution and you say, yes, today is a good day. Let me give a toast. Let me say new year to everybody and make a new year resolution, make a new new goal. And you're energetic, you're pumped up, you're charged up. So what you do is you work towards your goal for a few days and slowly the energy drops. How many of you resonate to this? I'm sure many of you resonate to this, that we do face this. We do make our new year resolutions. We do make our plans, but those fizz out. So the question is, why do they fizz out? Why is it that we are not able to achieve them? Well, we are not able to do that is because we face four major challenges, four major barriers. And that's how when I did this entire surveys, I could bucket all these barriers, these challenges into four major categories. So give me a moment and I'm going to share those challenges with you. So these are the four roadblocks. Number one, we are caged into perfectionism. We always chase perfectionism, isn't it? We always want everything to be perfect. Perfect plans, perfect goals, perfect family, perfect house, perfect company, and perfect life. We always want that. And sometimes we feel proud by saying, oh, I'm a perfectionist, just like Amir Khan. Well, <laughs> I'm not saying perfectionism is not good. I'm not saying that you shouldn't chase that. What I'm saying is, if perfectionism is caging you, is becoming a burden, it is stopping you, coming in your way to complete your task, to complete your goal, then there's a problem. Now, how would you break this perfectionism? You break this perfectionism by applying the principle 70% is perfect. And that's what I did. When I wanted to become a podcaster, wanted to launch my podcast channel, I was caged somewhere into perfectionism. You know what I did? What I did was to start a podcast channel, I wrote say 10 topics and I picked the one topic and I wrote a script. After doing that, I recorded it and I put up some background music. I did some editing. I put up the intro and the outro and I created an MP3 file. And I share this with my daughter and I share this with my husband and I asked them, please listen and tell me, give me some feedback. They listened and my daughter said, mom, this is too good. You must put this as your first episode. My husband said, go for it. This is fantastic. 
and i looked at him and said are you crazy no this is this is not okay i gave you to give me some critical feedback tell me where are the mistakes where should i improve what is it that i must change i think you have not heard it well do this again they did it again they said it's good to go for the first episode i was not okay i said no i don't think so what i did i re-recorded everything and i started making some change why because i felt maybe a couple of examples are not okay maybe the story is not right maybe the music is not okay and i did again i wasted a couple of days again created an mp3 file and i gave it to them i said listen to this now i made some changes i changed my voice modulation i did some uh, change in the music listen to this they listened and they said you know what the first one was better i was like no the first one was not good but after some amount of arguments and discussions then finally i said okay if that is what it is i will upload it and let's see what happens i upload it i send the link to everybody my friends my community my participants my clients everybody you know what happened not even it had been 24 hours and i got hundreds of responses feedback compliments and the best compliment that i received was bharti this could be one of your tedx speech and when i when i heard that i was i was stunned i said how come how come this became so good and in my head i realized that maybe i was caged into perfectionism i was chasing perfectionism because in my head i was not okay i wanted to refine it further i wanted to change few things again and again without realizing that for us it could be 70% perfect but for the audience for the world it is 100% perfect you must release it you must submit you must give it don't cage yourself into perfectionism if it is coming in your way then that's no good she is excellence not perfectionism and from that moment i started chasing excellence and i keep making changes keep excelling only by 5% so whenever i create any content whenever i create or design any workshop or any course or i meet or i do my business meeting even for this work even for this session i made the session 5% better than what i did last time because i wanted to i wanted to bring that excellence in my sessions in my talks so i did changes and i made it 5% better than what it was last time and that's what i do i broke the barrier of perfectionism and the principle is 70% is perfect well the next we all get overwhelmed isn't it why because we have so many things on our platter we have so many things to do in our life we have a huge list of to do we have a to do list we have so many goals to achieve we have uh, we have a whole bucket list to to do we get overwhelmed overwhelmed with so many things to do in our life why because the platter is full i don't know what to do and you know what happens whenever we are overwhelmed we take random actions whenever we are overwhelmed what happens is the brain gets confused and in that confusion we'll pick up any random thought that will come in this way and those random actions will put you into random results not your desired results random results now if you want to do that go for it if you want to have a you know if you want to be very very good at something if you really want productivity in your life if you really want to focus then the best way to do is only focus on one thing at a time when you focus on one thing you get results now it's very easy it's very easy let me let me tell you how it is easy it's easy because we have tremendous amount of energy inside us but what happens when we start focusing on so many things our energy gets distributed 
it gets distributed. Why? Because we are doing too many things. And what happens? It leads us to overwhelm. It leads us to overwhelm and start taking random actions. Now, if you want to achieve results, if you really want to be productive in your, in your work, in your life, then focus all your energy while doing one thing at a time. So when you put all the amount of energy, your resources, your time, your efforts, everything doing one thing, what you get is not just clarity, but you also get committed to your work. You get committed to that task and you ensure that you complete it. Why? Because you want results, your desired results. So to break this roadblock, the barrier of overwhelm, focus and put the principle one thing at a time in place. And let me tell you this. Now here's the time for me to break the myth. We all feel proud to say that we are multitasker. But let me tell you, multitasking is a myth. We cannot multitask. We cannot multitask. We can do, multi we, we multitask in thinking, not in doing. We can think number of things at a time. Why? Because our thinking is multidimensional. So we can think so many aspects at one go. But when it comes to doing, it is one at a time. It is linear and not multidimensional. And there are loads of loads of example that I can share. One of the simplest example is look at your homemakers when they make food in the kitchen. In maybe an hour or two, they are able to make four recipes, you know, sabzi, roti, dal, rice, everything. But if you look at carefully when they roll the chapati and when they have to stir the vegetable, they stop rolling the chapati, they stir it and then they keep doing rolling the chapati again. So they have, you have to stop one thing, do something, and then come back. So it is always doing one thing at a time. And that will give you productive results, not focusing on multiple things. So stop pushing yourself that we are multitasker and we can do multiple things. You can think multiple, which is good. But when it comes to doing, focus on one thing, complete it, go to next, complete it, go to next that will make you help productive rather than procrastinators. The third roadblock that comes in our way is overthinking. We keep on thinking over one aspect again and again, sometimes thinking over one decision again and again, and that puts us into self doubts. We start doubting ourselves. We start doubting our interest, our likes, our capabilities, our decisions. And when we keep on doubting ourselves so much, what happens? We start taking external validation from others. We start approaching others for their opinions, for their advice, for the suggestions. Now taking somebody's advices or suggestions, that's fine if you take that. But if you are dependent on those people, if you are dependent on that person for the advice and you do only when that person tells you, you know what you are doing to yourself? You are giving the control of your life to somebody else. Why? Because every time you doubt yourself, you take external validation by saying, Is it right? Am I, am I going well? Is the right decision? Please tell me. You tell me, I'll do it. If those are the words, that means you have been overthinking again and again. Now, how do you break that? How do you break this roadblock? Because I have come across hundreds of hundreds of professionals, entrepreneurs, they keep sitting on this one decision. They don't take those decisions, business decisions, which are so important. To break this roadblock, the simple principle is to work from future. Working from future gives you results. Now, what do you mean when you say working from future? Now, this is what the funny part is. We have a reference point. And whenever we want to take any action in the present, we always focus on our past. We look at the past, we look at how we did this, what were our successes, what were our failures, and we take actions. But we forget that those references from the past 
may not work because we had some failures, we had some successes, and that same situation is not there. So then what do we do? We create a reference point from the future because we are doing everything to make our future bright. So when you create your, your future, the reference point from the future, and you work towards your present, that gives you results. So what is this reference point? That reference point is a very, very strong, very, very strong picture, the image that how do you want your future to be? So if I had to ask you, you are in a, you are, you are in a profession, you might be an entrepreneur, you might be a business owner, or you might be in a professional working in a company, or you might be a student. How do you see yourself in your future? Do you have that clear picture? Do you have the clear image that this is how I want to look like? Well, I have. I have a very clear picture of Bharti that how I want to look like in my future. And I use a very, very strong imagination, very strong visualization, because I want that as a reference picture. That reference picture is going to help me to work towards my present. Why? Because I'll be highly encouraged, very much motivated, my inner drive to take actions every single day, again and again, comes from that reference picture, because I want to be like this. When I achieve this, I go for the next image and I want to be like this. Now, it, it worked fantastic when I was working with my health goal. So what I did was, now you don't have to tell everybody, all right? What I did was I went to the store. I bought a very expensive evening dress, which were two sizes lower than mine. And I, I brought this home. My husband looked at it and said, are you crazy? You bought this expensive dress, which you can't even wear today, which you can't wear now. It's two sizes lower. I said, that's exactly the point. It is two sizes low. Hence, I want to wear this in my future. That's my future. And I want to see myself wearing that dress. That's the encouragement. That's the inner drive. And I keep working on my health to be in that dress because I imagined myself to be in that, working from your future, not from your past. Don't go back to your old, uh, old photographs of your college or of, of your, when you were in your early 20s or late 20s and say, I want to have this body, but you cannot have that body because your body has grown. Your body has become more mature. You cannot rewind your body. It has already grown and you're a mature person now. Your body has become mature. Your cells have grown, some have dead, some are new. You need to look at the future and work towards your present. And that will help you to remove this overthinking, the barrier of overthinking that you have. And the last roadblock that we all face is the fear. Oh my God, the fear of failure. What if I do something and it doesn't give me results? What if this fails? What if I do something and I don't get the results? Uh, rightly said by uh, Bharti, uh, fear of failure is kind of uh, restrict all the plans. Uh, like uh, if we have some good uh, encouragement and uh, motivation, then definitely we can uh, overcome uh, fear of failures. And uh, if we have good vision, that is also one of the uh, thing by which we can overcome uh, fear of failure. What do you think, uh, Nimil sir? Absolutely true, Chirag bhai. So basically, what we have seen earlier, uh, sometimes like we organize one of the talk in the similar kind of subject. <clears throat> and today I got the answer from party. 
that that uh, specific Friday night talk regarding the perfection, perfectness only. And speaker told that in life, unnis bis chalta hai. Many times we believe that we need the certain kind of standard value in our life day to day, whether it's a product, whether it's a, some in business order. But yeah, and, uh, uh, yes, above seventy percent. What she says in general also in school education. If you remember, seventy percent consideration distinction mark. So seventy percent. What she says a perfect that uh, instead of investing more and more lifespan to become a perfectionist, thoda unnis pis chalta hai. So thoda diabetes, blood pressure bhi kam hoga. Not only ke aapne jo anger ne saath hai, wo kam hoga. So yes, she is agree. I agree with her statement. But uh, during the program i have seen that param has changed the status from achiever to dreamer someone is there i think after watching her program many people as first of all break the uh, they break the thought process in mind about the multitasking because multitasking is the most popular word nowadays in today's hectic uh, lifestyle but she also says that the multitasking is just in the Dream, you can say, you can think, but it's very tough to apply at a time. A wonderful example. Uh, uh, we will wait for another two, three minutes. There is some uh, issue in a. Uh, okay, she's again. Yes. Okay, she's connected again. Park is again. There's some uh, problem with. Uh, okay, Bharti, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, please. So we have started to brainstorming session, but today's session is very interesting. Yeah, please, please, please. Yeah, my apologies for uh, the small glitch. Yeah, that was the last bit I wanted to share. So just give me a few seconds and I'll be back. Yeah, you can see the screen now. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. So fear of failure. We always face this fear that what if i do something and i don't get results what if if i take actions and it's not the way i want to be what if things don't work out what if i i put so much of time and there's no results and we get we get caught up into this vicious cycle of what if and what happens when you caught up into this what if slowly the fear of failure slips in. Now, how do you break this barrier? How do you break this roadblock? The simple principle is 595. 595 principle works fantastic. I'll tell you how. Now, just think about it. If this is your timeline, your time frame, where you have decided to take actions and you want to complete your task, or you may want to complete the goal that you have decided, all right? So what you do is the first action or the first thing that we do is we plan. We plan, we do research, we do some analysis, we do some comparisons, and then we take action. So there's a lot of time, a lot of amount of time, we only plan, strategize, do our research, collect all the data, do some analysis, some comparison, and then we take action. What happens? When we are taking actions, this is only this much because we spend 5% of our time in taking action. So what do we get? We get some results. Now, when we get some results, that results is not our desired results. Those results are not our desired. Why? Because only this much. Why? Because the action was only this much. But what we get is feedback. Now, with that feedback, we will again go back to the planning. We again start analyzing what happened, what went well, what didn't go well, we do our research, we start comparing, and then after so much of discussion, so much of analysis, we then take action. Again, that's 5%. What happens? The fear starts slipping in. We start asking questions. Kya fayda hua itna karne ka? Results to nahi mila. Nothing. Why we should waste our time? Why we should do all these things? Because 
We didn't get the results that we wanted to. Baba, you didn't spend that much time in taking actions. You were only planning, planning, planning. And you don't realize that it slips you into fear, the fear of failure. Now, let's flip the rule. Instead of 95-5, let's do 595. So obviously, the first thing that we do is planning. You plan enough. You, you look at your resources, look at your time frame, look at all the things that you have, and you plan enough. You plan enough to take the first step. Take the first step and see what results do you get. You will get feedback as well. And with that feedback, you go back to the planning. And again, you plan enough to take the second step. When you again take the second step, what you get, you get feedback. You go back to planning and you keep taking actions. Now, as you keep doing this, what happens? You get results. Results that is very close to your desired results. Why? Because this time, you were continuously focusing on taking actions. It was 5% planning, planning enough to take the first step. And as you were taking actions, you were going back to planning, you were doing your changes, you're making some differences. And again, you were taking actions. What happened when you kept on taking actions towards the goal that you want to achieve, towards the dreams that you want to fulfill, what you got is confident. You became so confident for your results, for your efforts, for your process. And when you apply these principles, you not only achieve the results, but you create an achiever's blueprint towards success. You enjoy the life. Why? Because every time you're getting the results that you wanted to. And with this, I would really love to share that I have written a small book, which is a small ebook. And I can share that ebook, uh, which is easily downloadable. You can simply click the link and download it. It will give you a fantastic insights of how you can increase your personal productivity. And with these four principles, that's what I keep applying every single day, even today. I keep applying the same four principles to remove the barriers, to remove the roadblocks that will stop me from taking actions. And I broke through from my procrastination barriers. And that's the blueprint I created for myself. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nimal. Thank you, Chirag. Thank you. Uh, uh, when uh, Nimil sir told me regarding a uh, uh, speaker, then I immediately replied him, Sirf na bhi kafi hai. That was my reaction at that time. Uh, let, uh, let's move toward the question. Um, first question we have that is, what is the roadmap to avoid uh, procrastination? Okay, a very nice question, uh, in fact, uh, Chirag. So the roadmap to avoid procrastination and the moment you're saying that you're avoiding procrastination, that means you know that you procrastinate but you want to give a blind eye. You want to avoid. I don't want to see it. Well, if you have that approach, chances are that it will keep on happening again and again. So the first uh, step that I do is I become aware and I accept. The first step is I'm aware that I procrastinate and that's okay. The second step is I accept that I do this. And the third question I ask is what next? If I delayed something, if I procrastinated on any action, all right, I accept that I did that. What is the next thing that I must do? So the question I ask myself is what next? And the moment I ask this, I jump into the action, the, the thinking towards action. So I would say, instead of avoiding procrastination, I would say, acknowledge that you are doing this and now you ask this question. So how should I take this forward? How can I remove this? And to remove this, you apply these four principles that I just shared, that I uh, explained each one of you, that you can remove this procrastination, get rid of it. Because it is like that termite that eats you up from inside and you don't realize it. 
procrastination, we think it is very casual. It is something that we do it every day and that's okay. Let me tell you, with the tremendous amount of time that I spent in researching and studying about this subject, procrastination is that termite that eats you up from inside. You will realize that only after five years, 10 years, 15 years of your, of your life. So my, my answer would be don't avoid, just acknowledge, accept, and take action to remove it. That's an excellent answer. Um, we have a second question. Um, it is asking about the challenges. Which uh, challenges you found to avoid procrastination uh, while giving uh, lectures and training? Which are the major challenges? You can take five, maybe. Okay. Uh, if you ask me personally, what challenges I faced is number one, I used to cage myself into perfectionism. Like simple, simple example is um, my, my presentation slide should be perfect. My, uh, the, the dress that I'm wearing should be perfect. I should look very good. Uh, before pandemic uh, hit us, I was doing all the classroom uh, trainings, uh, conferences, being a keynote speaker. So I had a big blockage to come online. I had a big problem to be on a camera. I was very much shy. Well, you won't agree because now if you look at me, I have overcome all those barriers. I'm very much comfortable and very happy to be on the camera, to be happy on the virtual platforms. But it took time for me to come through. But when I was, when I was going through all those phases to overcome my barriers, the biggest challenge that I faced was perfectionism. The second challenge was overthinking. And I was not realizing that how I can remove this. So as I was working towards my patterns to overcome this procrastination, I started dealing with this and I started applying these principles and that gave me results. Thank you. Uh, That's a great answer. Um, over to you, Param, for the next question. Okay, so the next question that we have is that uh, we discussed the achievers matrix. And we saw that there are different positions on that matrix. So is there any particular position which should always be the right position or maybe it is okay for people to be in different positions or in different quadrants at a time? Okay, so I will make your, uh, I'll, I'll answer you in a very simple manner. Uh, if you look at the matrix, uh, it has achievers, it has dreamers, it has rainbows and it has random winners, all right? Now, at, if you pick any point of time in your life, you may feel that, oh, I'm a dreamer. But if you, have the, if you have an exact blueprint of how I can move from a dreamer to an achiever, you can do that. So sometimes you may fall into the category of random winners. And you may say that, oh, I take random actions. I take quick actions, but I don't know what next is lies with me. So that means what is missing is a very clear vision. What is missing is very well-defined goal that will help me. So you look at the achievers matrix and you can start looking at is what is it that's missing? If I fulfill that, I will be in the achievers category. So gradually you learn to move in the achievers category and identify your own ways to be in that achiever zone. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, there's one more question from Mr. Ajit Jain. Uh, he's asking that if you have uh, some guru or mentor, so who was your guru or mentor who helped you through this? Okay, lovely, lovely answer. Uh, I will tell you, um, if I look at my areas of life, I have uh, at least five or six mentors, uh, at least five or six coaches. They even help me today. So for example, when, I, when it comes to health, I'm not an expert in health. I know that I must take care. I know that there should be a proper diet. I know there should be a proper uh, exercise routine, but I'm not an expert. I have not studied diet, diets or nutrition. So I have a dietitian, I have a nutritionist. She takes care of my things and she keeps guiding me. So I have an expert, a mentor who only takes care of my health. For my financial aspects, when it comes to business financials, I have 
hired an expert who takes care of my finances because I have not studied finance. I'm from a science background. So I don't, I, I don't understand much of finances. So I always take help of my expert. So I have my mentor who, who helps me with all the financial decisions. Where should I invest? How should I take care? How much savings? And how should I look at my balance sheet? So I have my financial uh, person who takes care of it. When it comes to my career, when it comes to understanding human behaviors, human mindset, psychology, understanding the patterns, I have my mentors, my coaches. His name is Robert Smith and Liz Bailey. They are from Scotland. They are from UK. And I keep taking advices. I keep taking their coaching and they help me to guide in whatever manner that they can. So if you look at me now, and if you go back and look at how I was when I used to conduct my um, events, you'll see a great difference. And the difference is because I kept, I kept on working how I can deliver it better, how I can change my voice modulation, how I can have my nice visual appeal on the screen. I kept on working towards it. So I have these coaches who help me, who mentor me, and uh, I keep taking their advices. So if I tell you in a very, very uh, simple sentence, my philosophy of life is very simple. If I want to have success in my life and in a short period, I better go to an expert, better hire a coach who can guide me and take me to those steps, a very, very simple, straight, actionable steps and let me only focus on my results. Let me only focus on my success. Let him or let her guide me. And that's what my philosophy has been over this decade. And it has given me tremendous results because every time I have to learn something new, I go to my coach, I go to my expert and I take the inputs. Thank you so much, ma'am. So uh, I think with no more questions pending, with the permission of the chair, uh, we'll move towards concluding the session. So first of all, I must say uh, that we all knew because we all are attending the Friday evening talks every Friday. Uh, the way you started the session with that story, you the way you set up the entire mood for the session, we knew this was going to be really different. And trust me, uh, it was a really very different, a very enriching experience, I must say. You know, since childhood, we have been hearing those lines. Kal kare so aaj kar, aaj kare so ab. Pal mein parle hoegi, bahuri karega kab. But the greatest question that nobody answered was, how exactly should I move from this kal kare so aaj kar? You know, right from the morning, when we wake up, when we have to wake up, we keep snoozing our alarm clocks. Uh, when we have to get that perfect body that we want, or we want to get rid of that disgusting fat, uh, we do a little bit of workout today and then we think, okay, fine, I'll do, it too. I'll do it tomorrow, I can't do it. You reach office, you see the pile of files on your desk and you feel, okay, aaj itna ho jayega, baki ka kal kar lunga. And right up to night, you know, there's, there's this new term that has come up on social media. It's called revenge bedtime procrastination. So that's like, you don't sleep, you don't sleep, you just keep yourself engaged in social media or anything else, but you don't sleep. So what we are seeing these days is that you know, all 24 hours, whatever activities we do, we are just procrastinating in all of that. And to get out of that procrastination, the first thing that we need to do is to position ourselves, to accept how much of a procrastination we are doing or how much of a habit it has become. And the achievers matrix that you gave, you're, you know, plotting yourself as to where exactly you fall and where do you need to start from. That was really a wonderful addition for all of us because, you know, once you know where to start from, that is when you'll know how to develop your roadmap. So definitely, I think uh, this is one of the best inventions that we have got to know of uh, in all our lives. And along with that, the principles that you gave, that 70% perfection is perfect or that you should always do one thing at a time, that multitasking is a myth. Uh, trust me, all of this is really so true. And the way you explained it, when we hear it, that is when we realize that we have really been thinking of wrong things all the time. We need to focus on what we are doing. And as you said, the right, uh, the right uh, way to get out of procrastination is to take one thing at a time, finish it, and then go to the next. So I must say, 
nimal sir chirag bhai and uh, i think all the attendees would also agree today's session was really different and you know the one good thing about this session is also that the way you set up the mood the way you got everyone engaged right now i think that i can actually recite the entire session all of the points that you said because it has all been fit very well into our minds so thank you so much for such a wonderful session and i think it's not just one session probably we can have a lot more sessions from you uh if you're up for it thank you so much ma'am for the wonderful evening yeah, over to nimil sir for um uh, and definitely also uh, <laughs> uh thanks to baroda management association uh nimil sir deepak sir the president and uh, the managing committee for giving us such wonderful such a wonderful session and such an enlightening experience over to you nimil sir yeah param thanks thank thanks a lot param uh param uh, uh, i i like to say something about bharti bharti as i say initially she is a seasonal speaker you know why whenever i think that i need absolutely think out of the box kind of thing or some kind of orthodox kind of management system which should be described by the uh, seasonal uh, player so bharti is there and more than that uh, believe me in last decade of experience to conducting this friday evening talk uh, chirag and param there are less than two numbers less than five i think that not two numbers less than five couple i have seen that they both are the trainer so bharti nayak and pratish nayak both are very close to our heart me and vikas bhai they are the favorite uh, couple that whenever we think nayak ke chalo ab and you will surprise that for many topic like last topic uh, pratish has addressed about bitcoin 6 years back जब लोगों को पता भी नहीं था कि बिटकॉइन क्या चीज है तब उन्होंने पूरा वन आवर्स का टॉक बिफोर दैट टेक्नोलॉजी पार्ट एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजी इन द आईटी इंडस्ट्रीज बिकॉज ही इज अ बेसिकली फ्रॉम आईटी इंडस्ट्री सो यस यू आर एब्सोल्युटली राइट समथिंग यूनिक काइंड ऑफ ओपनिंग एंड जैसे ओपनिंग हुआ ना तो मैं एक वर्ड टू वर्ड लाइन टू लाइन म्यूजिक सुन रहा था और सब्जेक्ट को सामने रखा था लिटरली मैंने बोला ये 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 क्या इसमें से आ रहा है धीरे धीरे देन आई रियलाइज की आइस ब्रेकिंग अभी तक मैंने बहुत सुना है हाथ लंबा करो स्पीड थप थपाओ जोर से गुड मॉर्निंग तीन चार बार बोलो ये पहली बार ऐसा मैंने देखा सो रियली भारतीय वट यू से नॉट ओनली इन द सब्जेक्ट वाइज ऑल्सो इन द स्टाइल ऑफ द एड्रेसिंग द पीपल इन यूनिक वे और दैट्स माय कॉन्फिडेंस दैट यू कंटिन्यू माई कॉन्फिडेंस थैंक्स अ लॉट थैंक यू थैंक यू निमिल thank you i lived up to your uh, expectation thank you <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah, i i always high expectation from you wo 595 95 wo wo aap subject pe bata but aap se to perfect not 70 90% not 100 and you are out of 100 of 100 chirag param what do you say so these are the young generation is giving you the response yeah uh, uh, definitely definitely <laughs> <laughs> thank you so we fortunate that we have right now with us a very popular person he is a basically electronics and telecommunication engineer black belt karate champion and as a coach and he is a police inspector at cyber crime police station baruch mayank rajya guru mr mayank rajya guru is also very popular in police department because of electronics telecom plus black belt karate and you can see as a telecom engineer right now is the cyber crime police station many time i have received message from him that i want to continue i want to connect with with the friday evening talk two days given me con- just i have checked in the participant side whether there is a mayank rajaguru is there or not so thank you mayank bhai apart from this there are many senior people as bharti and we all know that uh, jagdish bhai is there then mr uh, one of the content writer very popular person mr k h mangad is there and uh, uh, apart from this i can see many faces so thanks a lot bharti once again to continue my confidence and like but not least yahi se aapke through hum hamare pyare pratish bhai ko message de rahe ki fpt aapka wait kar raha hai koi naya topic ke sath mein definitely chirag and param will agree yes sir yes, sir. definitely thank you uh, yeah uh, over to 
Chirag, about next Friday evening talk, something different. Yes, uh, next Friday evening talk is uh, topic is on uh, your image is your brand, and we have a speaker Parimal Shah from Surat. Uh, this is kind of advantage uh, at this moment uh, uh, at BMA. We can invite a speaker from any part of the India. That's kind of an advantage at this moment we have. Um, thank you. Thank you, Bharti Madam. Uh, and thank you, Nimil sir and uh, Param. Uh, we can conclude this session. Thank you. Thank you uh, for your uh, time and uh, uh, guidance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.